And not that you have anything going on, not that you're busy at all, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, it's the first of the year, so we know budget time, and then you've, uh, at some point in time, going to hire a basketball coach mm -hmm. and everything else. Just kind of, now that you can look back at 2015, and you had a little bit of time, not a lot, to kind of assess 2015, just your thoughts. Well, we're getting better in a lot of areas. We're, um, when we look at every aspect of our department from, you know, uh, fiscal uh, responsibility uh, with budgets and also in enhancing our revenues. Uh, we, we definitely did that. We built, opened up a new facility, opened up several new facilities uh, with, um, you know, the, in the SAC building, the, uh, the football, the Centennial expansion, the, the women's soccer and tennis clubhouse. Um, we're in the process of building new bowling locker rooms and, and, lo and people don't even know about those and, and uh, building new courts right now and tennis courts and so we've done a lot of uh, great things we've enhanced the football offices which we greatly needed to do and and, and, in, and in the past and I want to make sure this is on the record you know we spent this university has spent uh, almost five million dollars just on the combo alone so when people say well when we you know when we uh, when we get put some money into basketball, we put we put tons of money into basketball. You know, new courts, new uh, enhanced the weight room, the locker rooms, all that kind of stuff. You know, it was it was sad. Here we are trying to compete at the highest level of football in the stadium. When I got here, it was the exact same stadium I played in. in 1991, the exact same, except for the end zone part of the end zone facility. 1991. So it was it was time that we needed to do some things. Um, you know, uh, you know, soccer was in transition this year with the new coach, and I think you know that he's on the recruiting trail. Other than that, things were, things are going pretty well. Uh, cross country um, didn't have as good a year as we, we they had in the past, but obviously volleyball it's been well chronicled. Um, football, men's women's basketball is off to a good conference start. Um, so we're going to continue to be get better. I mean, that's what we preach all the time here, and that you have to be highly productive in your job, highly productive. We constantly talk about reaching that new milestone, you know, your achievements of the day become your expectations tomorrow. Always rising, I know that some people are like, oh, I'm, I'm a Hodger guy, you know, the, the AD with the funny last name, you know. Uh, you know, always saying always rising. Well, there's a reason why I say it, because we always have to get better, including me. And if I'm treading water and I'm staying still, we're getting worse. So what's, my, what's our next step in getting better? And uh, that's in everything. That's in compliance. That's in budgets. That's in uh, our jobs program. That's our study abroad. That's our, our services, our you know, fueling stations, our strength coaches. Everything that we do, how do we continue to get better? And if you always try to find that next milestone and that next threshold from a revenue, you will absolutely be growing and moving in the right direction. You know, obviously, you're, you're, you're very goal-oriented. You always set goals. 2016 what are what are some of the things that you set out not just for yourself but obviously for your staff or for the coaching staffs for uh, whatever it may be things that you want to see improve change new whatever in 2016. well I, I mean our goal every year is to compete for the conference championship and obviously bowling's and well I guess they're in the Southland now uh, they their goal, our goal for them is to compete for the national championship um, obviously they're at that level now and you know, with the advent of the new partnership with Jonesboro Bowling and, and all, it's, it's really I think it's we're in the right direction. But to compete for the conference championship, and or to be better than where you were last year, you know, and uh, you know, so volleyball, you know, they would they win the conference again. Now, you know, how many they win or lose during the season? It's always about winning the conference, winning the conference, and winning a game in the tournament. You know, that's our next goal. You know, football, beat, win the conference, beat some, beat a team you're not supposed to beat. Be ranked higher. Be ranked higher than what you were ranked in, uh, this year at the end of the year rankings, uh, as far as the CFP rankings. Um, you know, uh, from a fundraising standpoint, we got to raise more money. We got to build an operations center. We got to look at enhancing our foot, our baseball facilities. We got to look at maybe adding a sport. Uh, we really want to do that. Um, you know, so uh, we've got a lot of work to do, and uh, you know, we've got a um, we need we can't do it with just the people in this combo and the football offices and all that stuff we need people in the community to help us and uh, you know Texas Alabama Michigan Ohio State usually they're all 
those schools because they had people to help them. They bought tickets. They uh, they gave donations. They helped the program. They they became owners of a uh, franchise of an all sport franchise, and um, that's what we need. We need more owners. I think what it is, Terry. I mean, just in me talking to people, and I I, I try to spread this word, but I think sometimes people fall into that trap of thinking, well, you know, what I could give is not enough, which is which is completely Absolutely. and totally inaccurate. I mean, a hundred dollars a year would go a long way when you have, you know, a thousand people doing That's that right. or, or whatever. Absolutely. So just talk a little bit about that. There's yeah, no I mean, amount too small. There really isn't. You know what? And I'll tell you why. Just get used to giving. Because your first gift won't be your last gift. So if you give a fifty dollar donation, a hundred dollar donation, you spread it out over twelve payments. I mean for less than Two or three Starbucks coffees a week, you can make a donation to your your school, your you know, to our, our athletics department, and uh, help us tremendously. Donor, there's strength in numbers. The more donors we have, the more we can call on you in a later time to buy tickets to to help us with be a stronger Red Wolf Nation. To when we need to buy bowl tickets, we need to go to the NCAA tournament. We need to do all kinds of things. We we need those we need those numbers. So. Yeah, I mean, we just, we just, we have to, we need as many people as we possibly can to give whatever they can give. I mean, if you want to give $10, you want to give $12, pay $1 a month, we'll take it. We'll take it. You know, you, you mentioned the ops and you mentioned baseball and, you know, the, the plans there and yeah. just as far as let's, let's kind of break those down because I get asked often about yeah. baseball and of yeah. course I get asked about ops and yeah you know I, I tell people all the time if you don't pay attention you're, you're not realizing everything that has been yeah. done facility wise and you mentioned some of those here earlier but the status of ops I mean obviously realize there's money needed to finish that sure. but and then also the other part of that is your thoughts and plans for a baseball facility yeah well um I'll, I'll hit the ops first you know when we uh when I got here, there was a there was plans to build the indoor the student activity center, the indoor f football facility too, as well the multi-use facility I should say, because all of our sports use it, and they are they are using it. If you ever go on there, you'll see the golf Cheer team, and baseball, dance use it too. they all use it. Band mm -hmm. uses everybody, rugby everybody, so it's great. It's fantastic. I couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, I hope more students use it. Um, uh, but the operations center does not put off a lot of revenue. Obviously, it's a training facility. We have a training facility. It's not up to par. We need to enhance it. Um, I shouldn't say that. It is up to par. We need to do some enhancements from uh, from the expansion of the athletic department. We need to grow from a Title IX gender equity. We need to move some coaches around over here. I probably would move my office over to our, where our football office is. So, I mean, there's. I mean, obviously, we won with the, but we need probably a different weight room, and we need to build some team rooms and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, we definitely. It's nice, but it can be better. Um, so we took a little bit of a detour uh, to generate, to, to build a, this Centennial expansion because it's going to generate revenue. We have to generate re revenue. And so that's why we took a little bit of a, um, a detour. Now we're back on the ops. Uh, we probably need anywhere from about 15, about $15 million still uh, to finish and complete. And so we'll, we'll win. So hopefully everybody is buying those uh, lottery tickets last week that. Uh, they're, they're keeping us in mind. Um, baseball, I, I truly believe, and I know you're a big baseball fan, uh, uh, this area, I think this is a really good baseball area. I think, I think if we enhance the fan experience at our baseball stadium, then we will have a lot more people come to the games. And so that's what we're looking at. And I think we've got a really good coach. I think we're going to continue to get better. Um, and we're just trying to provide another community opportunity for our the local people to come watch really good quality baseball our league is very good in baseball it is a by it's a top five league in the country top ten, five top ten you know depending on the year I mean so we got great quality ba baseball in this league so the fact that uh, you know the, the you know the idea now with our new license you know you can if someone wants to partake in a beverage or two uh, they can do that as well so we'll have some designated areas you know what that's fun that's a fun thing to do. So, what do you envision when when you think about that facility? Because I know for you, yeah. you, you everywhere we go, I know 
We've been at uh, the Sunbelt Conference baseball tournament. Yeah. We've been in Mobile, Troy. I mean, all these places. And I know everywhere you go, I see you always taking mental notes, yeah. things that you see that you like, and so on and so forth. When you mention that and envisioning, you know, obviously a facility that would attract more people and whatnot, and then obviously it's going to need to generate revenue as sure. well. But what are, what are kind of some of the things that you maybe would envision with a new Well, you probably facility? didn't think about that, but I, I, you know what? What I love is height, okay? And so, but it's expensive to build up, obviously. So one of the things that I have in mind and, and is to build down. So what's that mean? You drop drop the field six six feet. So when you walk in on ground level, you're looking down into the field. Be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So you look down the field and then you have these concourse areas that can, you know, they look over, you have some hospitality areas. So you actually have some hospitality and concourse, maybe some suites and some other club seats that might be covered. Sink the sink the dugouts, make them a little bigger. You know, uh, and I, I think I think uh, you, we do that. I think it'd be much more of a fan experience for, for folks. Yeah, there's no question. Um, you know, and, and we talk about so often, and you and I were talking about this before. And we, you turf it. Yeah. And you turf it so you can have other people play on it. High school championships on it, you know, so regional championships, whatever it may be. We were talking a little bit about conferences, and, yeah. and that's a that's a yeah. constant question. Sure. And uh, I don't think a lot of people know, I and mean, maybe they don't get the information. Yeah. You know, obviously you get all that information, and you've been reviewing some of that info as far as where the Sun Belt stands, where yeah. Arkansas State stands, in the group of five uh, world, if you will. And so with that question that constantly comes up about you know, a new conference and so on and so forth. Just talk about the rankings and, and maybe some of the stuff that people don't know. Well, I mean, you know, uh, the group of five has a different uh, financial formula um, as far as, you know, you, you they were at the end of the year for football. And really this is this, this is only sport, but from a revenue standpoint, they don't do this in basketball. You get shares if you make it longer, you know, additional games in the tournament. But, but the real money is football. Um, to help really to move the needle of our athletic department. And um, so um, you have the group of five, which are the five conferences, and we're always trying to be in that number one spot. This year we're in the fifth spot. You know, our, our, uh, to be very candid with our loss, La Tech was, we, 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 we were edged out by Conference USA by less than, oh, a point, you know? And uh, I think our, law, our, our loss to La Tech obviously didn't help. Um, and, um, you know, but, but our league is, we had two teams in the top 10 of the group of five rankings. Same as Mountain West had top 10. You know, they had two top 10 teams. So uh, uh, we're always striving to get that money. It's an additional, every, every spot that you step up, you get additional revenue. And we want to be, we want to send a team to the group uh, to the New Year's Six game. Obviously, we want it, and we're positioning ourselves to be that first team for the Sun Belt. We want to be that team. There, there's, you know, and I think, and there's no question we will be. It's just, you know, it's just a matter of time when we'll be there. So everything that we're doing, the enhancements, the season ticket holders, the, the, um, the training facilities, all that stuff, it's all part of where we're going, you know, and uh, uh, it's hard to get there if you don't know where you're going, right? Very true. Very, very true. <laughs> well, we know where we're going, so we just and we have a road and we're building our road, but we need help. We need a lot of hands, so um, we're going to continue to uh, get better. You mentioned the the you know obviously looking at adding an additional sport, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously yeah. there's been lots of talk of softball. Yeah, softball. I, I mean, I've been, I've been very public about. It. We'd like to add it. It's just a matter. Of it's a financial. What is that type of commitment? I mean, it's it, about it it's a, the the well because it's comparable to baseball. It's about a six hundred thousand uh, dollar a year expenditure. Yeah. So, plus you got to build a facility. So that's roughly three million dollars to build a facility. Uh, but we have you know we're looking at plans to 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 put it over there in the out or baseball outfield. We'd like to put it somewhere. Obviously, all this is subject to approval to the board of you know, our chancellor and president. And, Dr. Well, I mean, Dr. Hudson, Dr. Welsh, and board, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, we're doing all of our feasibilities on it right now. So, um, you know, our budget for our baseball is roughly six hundred 
fifty thousand, so it's got to be that six hundred thousand range. And and so you'd like to build a new op center for baseball and give softball the current baseball op center, which would be as good as any school in the country. I mean, it'd be a fantastic op center for softball. Fantastic. It'd be it'd be SEC, it'd be twelve quality op center. Better than a lot of those schools, and so uh, it's it's a nice. So we're we're looking at it. We're we'll continue to look at our finances every every day. Every time we generate new revenue, we're looking to see how can we put some more money. We also obviously have COA in there as well, cost of attendance. Um, to, you know, obviously we have 180 excuse me 85 football players on cost of attendance. You got to balance that out with the which is you know the the equity. I'm, I'm glad you brought up cost of attendance yeah. because I wanted to, I wanted to talk about that a yeah. little bit. Um, obviously, that's a it's a big deal. That's a, I mean that that plays a big role in recruiting and a lot of things in at every this sport. point in every sport. Yes. And so now that that is in place, just your thoughts of where it is, where it's headed. Well, where it is is uh, we're we're extremely proud um, that we're able to do it, and uh, we do it significant and a significant. Uh, uh, um, amount. Uh, I think we're in the top, based on the reporting now, I don't know all of them, but we're in the top 15 uh, in the country. Top 15, top 20 in the country is what our, what our distribution is. And you know what, really it's a huge deal. Um, with, but it's, you know, one of the things that we have, str uh, we strive for here is, you know, let's just be candid. We're going to continue to build things, but we're not going to outbuild Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Alabama. Nor are we going to try to outbuild them, okay? But what we can do is outservice them. I can guarantee you we can outservice them. So we're going to continue to provide things that help provide services for our students that will help them get a job after they graduate. Well, that's why we have a 100% job placement program. That's why we have a study abroad program. Those two right there is really life. It is. It's all about what you do. Uh, I mean, it's all about graduating and getting a job. No one else does that in the country. Nobody. Nobody. Well, I mean, uh, you know, a degree is great, but if it doesn't lead to a job, then That's what right. good is that? You know, and study abroad makes you more attractive as a candidate. Uh, if you are, uh, do you know how many college and students in America today? In all the colleges and all the universities in, in America, what percentage of college and university students in America study abroad? Give me that. what percentage? Oh, 10, uh, 10, 15, one percent. Wow, one percent. Doing the research, if you study abroad, you're ninety-seven percent more likely to get a job in the first year after graduating. If you study abroad. Your salary is 25% higher than those when you get a job than those that don't study abroad. So, out servicing everybody else and providing services to make our students, they're already disciplined, they're already good people, good teammates, all that stuff. So, giving them those extra services to make them more attractive uh, candidate in the job market. Is absolutely paramount, and that's what we're doing. We had our first study abroad program last year, which you, you people know about. Some people know about, some people don't. We've two years in a row we've had 100% job placement of all of our graduates. That to me is the best part of what we do, and and I like to tell people we're giving people an opportunity to change their environment, but the most important thing is we're giving people an opportunity to change their family circumstances. And that's what we do. And through college education and, and, and sport, they've got an opportunity to do that. And that's the, the absolutely foundation of our whole athletic department and getting better. And I, I think one of the biggest things that are out there that maybe is, maybe is something that people don't necessarily understand, you know, so often you hear people talk about, oh, athletic fees and football mm -hmm. this or baseball this or whatever. But the cohesion between the academic side and the athletic side, especially here at Arkansas State, is fantastic. You yeah. know, and one of the things mentioning the medical school and things yeah. like that, how huge that is awesome. on 
the sports side of things. And I mean, it Sweet. all goes hand in hand here. And that's I think right. that stops at the, starts at the top with yeah. Dr. Welsh yeah. and Dr. Hudson. And then you work uh, extremely yeah. well with them. And I think people don't understand how cohesive it really is. Yeah, here. the provost Cooksey, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Cooksey. Uh, well, I mean, academic look, uh, bottom line is I, like, I've said it many times. I don't know if I would have gone to co I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know what, uh, if it wasn't for college athletics, I don't know if I would have gone to college or not. I, I don't know. If it wasn't for a scholarship, I don't know what I'd be doing. I mean, it motivated me and it helped me. It, it, it helped shape my life. I, don't, I, I am absolutely convinced that if it wasn't for my scholarship to Arkansas State, I don't know if I'd be here today. So that fact that I'm not going to let our folks here, now they have an opportunity, but we're going to talk enough about it that you're gonna, you have an opportunity and you're privileged and you better use this resource wisely. 